Um, I have modified my slides so that all of the best information is at the top so the people in the back can hopefully see better. Yes, and uh, it's hard because some of the code is kind of long. But there is, this talk is very simple. It is the cleanest way to write observables. Um, there are multiple ways to write observables and they, um, you know, they can be difficult when you have multiple observables working together. I'm often, <laughs> clicker work, please work, no. Okay. That's not working either. Okay, here we go. I'm often faced with the task where I need to persist the output of one observable, but also use it as the input for other observables. Let me explain what I mean with an example. In this example, I have a get customer function that returns an observable I can subscribe to in order to get an order number. I also have a get order function that takes in an order and returns an observable I can subscribe to in order to get a purchase amount. My end goal is to have both the order number and the purchase amount appear on the page. There are multiple ways we can do this, and as I said, this talk will outline the different options available to us. The most direct way to get the information we need is to simply subscribe to both observables within each other. Here we've subscribed to the get customer observable in order to get the order number. Then we turn around within that subscription and subscribe to the get order call to get the purchase amount. The issues with, with nested subscriptions are fairly well known. If you're going to go down this route, I would recommend instead going to promises. That's going to be cleaner and will work better. Except unless you have multiple values that might be emitting, then you might have to figure some stuff out. But that's an option to, available to you. <coughs> A better strategy is to use RxJS operators to combine your observables together. Here we combine our observables together using a switch map. In order to persist the order number, we simply use a global variable inside the switch map function. We can then subscribe to get the purchase amount. This strategy works well. The only thing I don't like about this strategy is that it sort of hides where the order number is getting set. Ideally, I would prefer it if the order number was set within the subscribe call so it was clearer to the larger system what was happening. We can kind of do this with the tap operator, which does kind of highlight the side effect. And that's sort of an improvement, but really I wanted it within the subscribe call. We can force it to be within the subscribe call by building some kind of composite observable. Here we take the output of the first observable and combine it with the output of the second observable so that both are available to the subscription. I personally feel this is a step in the wrong direction. Yes, you know, it makes stuff more complicated. There's one more way that we can do this that might be better than all the ways we've considered so far. Are you ready for this? <laughs> we break up the chains using a, a share replay function. A share replay function is a simple function that basically converts your observable stream to a multicast stream. It's roughly the equivalent of passing your observable uh, stream to a uh, replay subject. Going back to our example, we can use a share replay to multicast our, the result of our get customer function to multiple subscribers. This allows us to have two subscribers that get the same order number value, but we only have the get customer function only gets called once. Um, this pattern lends itself well to the highest readability by driving all of our, our observables to a single responsibility. As an added bonus, we can, we can drop our subscriptions completely and instead expose our observables directly to the HTML using the async pipe. Pulling in, just thinking about it last night, we could also get even more crazy and go with two, two, uh, two signal. That would also be an option here. There can be problems with managing multiple subscriptions. If, for example, the order number observable in this case emitted an error, 
then both uh, subscriptions would have to manage that error separately. This is something we need to be aware of, but can be managed. We can use the, the operators for catching errors and, and different things like that. <clears throat> Ultimately, I recommend this last approach over the, uh, over the others. Writing our observables this way makes them more readable and extensible. That's it. <laughs> Thank <laughs>